On Sunday, 3rd of May 2020, Dave Greenfield died from contracting the COVID-19 virus. He was the keyboard player for the Stranglers, who were an English rock band who emerged via the punk rock scene. Scoring some 23 UK Top 40 singles and 17 UK Top 40 albums to date in a career spanning four decades, the Stranglers are one of the longest surviving and most continuously successful bands to originate in the UK punk scene. So, as a tribute to Dave, we are going to be ranking all the Stranglers albums from worst to best. Right, before I get started, this isn't my personal list. Uh, basically, I stopped paying attention to the Stranglers after Hugh Cornwall left. So, after his departure, I don't really know that much about. So, this script and this list has been written by my mum, and I've just added little bits and bobs. But at the end of each section, I've put why she's put it there. So, if you disagree with me, please don't. Put them, your list in the comments below. But as you're on your way down there, Hit that subscribe button also hit the like button also hit the share button as well share about share with all the other stranglers fans out there but let's get on with today's list number 17 cooper de grace so we start off this list at number 17 with cooper de grace and it was the last album to feature guitarist john ellis because he left the band in 2000 and the tracks on this album represent a more greater writing input from jean jacques Brunel than on previous other outings he also sings for four of the ten tracks on this album, and the album is heavily influenced by, in JJ's work, life in general. Tracks cover topics such as uh, the ravages of war, religious conflicts, and failed relationships. This album also includes the millimetre accompanied ballad in the end, but the album itself failed to actually reach the official UK albums chart. So why is it at the bottom? Well, in my mum's own words, there's just no joy to this album. Number 16, Written in Red. Released in January 1997 with a media party that was actually in Euro Disney in 1996. In Heaven She Walks was the only single release from this album, released on the 3rd of February. And it was the first Stranglers album that failed to hit the UK Top 40 albums charts. It only peaked at number 52 and that was in February. So why is it in this position? Well, basically, it was the beginning of the end for Paul, but Valley of the Bird is a track worth listening to. Number 15, About Time. So, released in May 1995, but was also co-produced by Alan Wynne Stanley, who actually worked on the first four Stranglers albums. Lies and Deception are, was the only single released from this album, and it's also one of the few Stranglers songs that are solely written by the drummer Jet Black. The album peaked at number 31 in the UK albums chart. And where, why is it here? Well, Lies and Direction is probably the only decent track on this album. Number 14, Stranglers in the Night. So Stranglers in the Night is the 11th studio album by the Stranglers, but it was the first one released on their own record label, Psycho. It also kicked off the career of Stranglers Mark II with Paul Roberts starting on the vocals and John Ellis is on the guitar after Hugh Cornwall's departure. The band itself for this album which returned to a more purer, less produced sound, the horns have gone and the songs are a bit more less constrained. It's a bit harder, a bit edgier. The album itself peaked at number 33 in the UK Albums Chart in September 1992. The single Heaven and Hell was released from the album and that peaked at number 46. And the follow-up single was Sugar Bullets, but it unfortunately failed to chart. So why is it here? Well, JJ didn't actually do that much singing, so no. Number 13, Norfolk Coast. So this is the 15th studio album by The Stranglers, and it was released on the 16th of February 2004. It was their first album in six years, and the first studio album with new guitarist Baz Warren. There was a number of songs that were actually written by him, including the ballad Dutch Moon. Norfolk Coast actually peaked at number 70 in the UK Albums Chart in February of that year, and it was only there for about one week. The album was actually very well received by reviewers and fans alike, showing a return to form for the band. It also spawned the band's first UK Top 40 single for more than a decade, with big things coming, coming in at number 31 in February 2004. The album also saw a re-emergence of the band's signature sound, such as Dave, key, uh, Dave Greenfield's keyboarding in a more contemporary setting. This was also the last album to feature Paul on lead vocals. 
Now, Norfolk Coast also spawned a short film. That short film uh, actually stars Jean-Jacques Brunel and was directed by Robin Bexter and co-starring Susanna York. It actually did win a quite a few awards. But, so why is it here? Although the title track Norfolk Coast is brilliant and the short film that accompanied it was fantastic, you can tell it was like the beginning of the end for Paul. Number 12, Sweet 16. Sweet XVI. It's the 16th album by The Stranglers and it saw the band return to a four piece after the departure of Paul Roberts. The lead vocals are actually shared between Jean Jacques Renault and the new guitarist Baz Wan, he joined on the previous album. It was released in September 2006, supported by a huge UK tour. The album peaked at number 89 in the UK Albums Chart and it also continues but builds on the shift to more of a recognisable sound scene in the previous album, More Than Coast. It's more of a sound that the original band was uh, likened to back in the 70s and early 80s. There was only one single spawn from this and that was Spectre of Love and that charted at number 57. But why is it here? Well, according to the person who wrote the script, they feel like the band was having fun making this album and that's what you need, a fun album. Number 11, 10. So 10, obviously, is the 10th studio album by The Stranglers, but it was also the last to actually feature Hugh Cornwall. It was released in 1990, and it peaked at number 15 and spent four weeks in the UK albums chart. There was only two singles released, 96 Tears, which actually peaked at number 17 in the singles chart, and Sweet Smell of Success, which only reached number 65. So why is it here? Well, unfortunately, you can actually hear Hugh's enthusiasm waning on this album but it did have a fantastic album cover with all the band members dressing up as various world leaders from that era. Number 10, Dreamtime. Dreamtime was the ninth album released by The Stranglers and it was released in 1986 and peaked at number 16 in the albums chart. It was actually the lowest album in Hugh Cornwall's tenure. The actual album itself is named after the Aboriginal people of Australia's belief in something called Dreamtime. There's quite a few singles released from this album, Nice and Nice, Always the Sun, Big in America, and actually my personal favourite, Shaking Like a Leaf. A fifth single was proposed, which was Was It You? It was recorded, but it was actually never released as a single. So why is it here? Meat and Vegetables, Was It Stew? Great line in a parade of being arrested. That's what they've put. I have no idea what they mean. Unfortunately, I'm going to disagree because if I was doing this list, I would put this as number one because, yeah, I love this album. But it's not my list, it's someone else's. I'm just presenting it today. Number nine, The Gospel According to the Men in Black. The Gospel According to Men in Black, or sometimes just referred to as the Men in Black. It was their fifth album and it's actually Hugh Cornwall's personal favourite album. It's a more of a concept album and it was released in 1981. The album itself deals with conspiracy theories surrounding alien visitations to Earth, the sinister governmental Men in Black, not the Will Smith film, and the involvement of elements in well-known biblical narratives. This wasn't actually the first time the Stranglers had used this concept. Men in Black on the earlier Raven album and some subsequent 1980 single release, Who Wants the World. They also explored it. The singles released from this album were Thrown Away, which charted at number 42, and Just Like Nothing on Earth. So why is it here? It is a brilliant concept album with some usual songs, all lovable. Can't say much more than that really, can you? Number eight, Oral Sculpture. Released in 1984, it was their eighth album and it reached number 14 in the UK albums charts. There were three singles released from this album, Skin Deep, which reached number 15, No Mercy, which reached number 37, and Let Me Down Easy, which actually reached number 48. The actual song Let Me Down Easy was also featured as the opening track for a 2015 film called Hardcore Henry. The tape version of this album though actually had a ZX Spectrum computer game called Oral Quest at the end of the tape, which could be loaded just by sticking it in the tape player for the ZX Spectrum. Why is it here? Well, it was one of the first albums they bought and it was one of the ones on tape and her and her friends were actually at a gig stood in front of JJ with lighters who told them to F off. Brilliant story. Number seven, La Folly. The Stranglers had actually been one of the most commercially successful bands of the punk new wave uh, period that was Roman Britain at that time. 
but by 1981, their success had sort of waned slightly. So this album was actually released in November 1981 in a more conscious effort to deliver a more commercial product. The album's French language title literally translates to madness, so in various interviews the band relate, referred to this album as the madness of love. And conceptually, each of the songs on the album was intended to explore a different aspect of kind of love. This album was preceded by the release of the album's first single, Let Me Introduce You to the Family, which was released also in November 1981 and reached number 42 in the UK singles chart. The album was released seven days later. However, upon its release, it did actually look to be like the band's lowest charting album. But it was buoyed by the success of their biggest selling single, which was Golden Brown, and which was released on the 10th of January 1982, reaching number two in the singles chart. The album actually eventually peaked at number 11 in the UK albums chart, spending 18 weeks in the chart. The single would actually go on to become EMI's highest selling single for many years. One more single was released from the album, and that was the title track La Folie, which was in April 1982, which actually only reached number 47. So why is it here? Well, this was the album that gave us Golden Brown, so it's going to be ranked high, and also Jean-Jacques Brunel's wonderful La Folie is a fantastic tune. Number six, Giants. So this was the 17th and unfortunately the last album the app band actually produced and lead vocals are actually once again shared between Baz Vaughan and bassist Jean-Jacques Brunel. The album itself was released on the 5th of March 2012 and it continues to shift to a more recognisable uh, sound that the bands used to in previous albums, especially their previous album Sweet 16. But it does build on it to especially a lot more of the 70s version of Stranglers. So why is it here? Well, it is back to bang, back to basics album on this one, and that you can tell the band is playing this from their guts. Number five, Feline. Feline is the seventh studio album and was released in January 1983. Feline actually drew heavily on two of the most dominant musical influences in Europe at that time by primarily using acoustic guitars as well as electronic drums. And also Dave Greenfield added his usual keyboard and synthesizer to the album as well. Actually, the American edition of this album also includes the hit Golden Brown as the closing track on side one of the original vinyl. Feline peaked higher than the earlier studio album release, reaching number four in the UK albums chart. There was actually three singles released. The first was European Female, which reached number nine in the UK singles chart and was also followed by a remix seven inch version of Midnight Summer Dream. The third and final single was Paradise, which was released in 1983, but only reached number 48. So why is it here? And I don't like this reason. One of her favorite songs was Midnight Summer's Dream, and it reminds her of the great storm of 1987 that hit the UK. And apparently, when I was six years old, I woke up and said, I woke up on a good day and the world was wonderful and this was after a storm hit. <sighs> Cheers, thanks for embarrassing me, Mum. Number four, Black and White. Black and White was the third studio album and it was released in May 1978. The album peaked at number two on the UK albums chart and it spent 18 weeks in charts. Now, the first 75,000 copies of this album came with a free seven inch white vinyl, which composed of three tracks, one of them was Walk On By, which was the second single release from this album. The only other single from this album was Nice and Sleazy. But why is it here? Well, Nice and Sleazy has an awesome bass line that's to die for. And of more fantastic tracks like Toiler, Curfew and Threaten. Number three, The Raven. The Raven was released on the 21st of September, 1979, and it reached number four in the UK albums charts and remained in the charts for at least eight weeks. However, and this is going to be quite controversial, it is believed it should have made number one. But because of an error in the chart, the police had reached number one, despite their album not actually being released at that moment. So this lead led to a controversy that the police album had been miscredited with the sales of The Raven. The album itself, though, bring, deals with lots of variety of issues, such as Japanese ritual suicide in the song Ice, heroin use in Don't Bring Harry, and the Iranian Revolution with Shah Shah Agogo and genetic engineering with genetics. Duchess was the first and most successful 
single from this album, and it was released in August 1979 and got to number 14 in the singles chart. Nuclear Device was the second single release, and this reached number 36. So why is it here? It's got one of their most favourite songs, which is Genetics, and I'm sure the guy who wrote Game of Thrones loves this album. It does have that quite Norse Viking thing. Number two, No More Heroes. So No More Heroes was the second studio album released in September 1977, five months after their debut album, Raskus Naviticus. The album itself consists of new material, but with also three tracks left over from the previous album. Two singles were released from the album, No More Heroes, as well as a double A side of Something Better Change, which was also released with the track Straight and Out. Another non album single came out for this later that year, and that was Five Minutes. But why is it here? This has the title track that when JJ teases the audience, it just gets that crowd going. It's also probably one of the most commercially known tracks as well, that No More Heroes, everyone knows it. Number one, Raticus Navicus. Raticus Navicus. I have probably butchered the name of this album so many times throughout this video. Luckily, it does have an alternative title. It's just called Four on their first album. Go figure. This is their debut album, and it was released in April 1977. It was one of the highest selling albums of the punk era in Britain, eventually achieving platinum record sales. Two of its tracks, Peaches and Get a Grip on Yourself, were released as singles in the UK. So why is it here? Well, basically the first album just screamed hits. You could probably release every track and you'll have a hit. But it does have the amazing Peaches hanging around, down in the sewer. As I said, every track on this album is a potential hit. So there we have it. That's the list for this video. Do you agree? Do you disagree? And if you do disagree, don't take it on me. I didn't actually write this list, but regardless, put your comments, put your list in the comments below. That would be fantastic. Unfortunately, this video is being made due to the tragic circumstances of Dave Greenfield's death and our heartfelt condolences go out to his family. Other than that, I look forward to seeing you next time on another video. Thank you very much for your time. Bye-bye.